absolutely beautiful. It's one of my biggest passions. The interconnectedness of everything. I think about compromise. And future. Teaching. Diverse. I think resilience is, a, is an important word. I think of mist and rain and storms. There's not just one word, but the, the combined sense of well-being is what I get when I think about the sound. Traditionally, as, as Skohomish people, it was a very big part of our travel. The knowledge that is held within How Sound is so hard to put into English words. There is just such an abundance there, and maybe it hasn't always been like that with the hard and terrible things that have happened in the sound that have kind of led us to where we are. But the passion and the love that resides in How Sound, not only from Skohomish people, but just from the generations of other people who have lived and worked and played there is um, so abundant. When you drive up the Sea to Sky Highway and you look out at Howe Sound, it like, looks like a two-dimensional flat surface. But meanwhile, underwater, there's all kinds of drama unfolding, and it's drama that matters. And so the Marine Reference Guide is a way to pull back that curtain and see what's happening underwater, not just with the marine life, but also in terms of what it is that people care about, what it is they value, and what's important when we go forward and make decisions about the sound. The Marine Reference Guide's goal is to protect the diverse economic, ecological, social, and cultural values associated with how sound at Katsum's ocean and freshwater. We work toward this goal by doing three things. First, we conduct research and create decision support tools like interactive maps that inform marine spatial planning and place-based education. Second, we host community engagement activities, such as knowledge sharing workshops, storytelling, and stewardship events, to strengthen people's connection to this special place. Finally, we devote a ton of energy toward relationship building, because we understand that protecting the diverse ways that people value and access the ocean requires a strong foundation of trust, collaboration, and respect. The Marine Reference Guide is a fantastic example of bringing knowledge together from multiple sources. It's individual groups, governments, uh, traditional knowledge keepers. They each have a valuable piece of information about this complex area, but it isn't until it all comes together that you really see how truly amazing and diverse Al Katsum is. And I look to the guide to help people who want to be a part of the sound to help us get a balance uh, between recreation, industry, residential, conservation. Uh, these are all very important features and I think no one really trumps the other. As someone who has a day job in construction and development but uh, a, a weekend passion and avocation of conservation, scuba diving, underwater photography, I see an interesting intersection where in the past, it would be adversarial or confrontational. Now, all the information's out there and it's unbiased and it's a lot easier to hold a conversation. The Marine Reference Guide, I think, is a really powerful tool. I think bringing all those pieces together, especially in my role as a community planner, in terms of looking at cumulative impacts over time, it's gonna provide a lot of information uh, that we can use to inform more evidence-based decisions. What's really exciting is about what started off as a mapping project turned into much more than that. It's brought a whole lot of stakeholders to the table and partners to the table who normally maybe wouldn't sit down together. It's got potential for research, it's got potential for citizen science, it's got potential for education, it's just got potential in so many different aspects. And I think that, that credit is due to the people behind it. The young people that have been leading the guide have been so inspiring. A lot of the time, we're taught that leadership is about having your own vision of success and encouraging other people to help you along the way. Whereas with the guide and the people involved, it's become more about the community and what other people want around you as well. Well, I've been a part of the Marine Reference Guide for two and a half years, doing event planning for Indigenous youth on the How Sound to get them recreating and exploring and researching, get youth, youth voice back into the picture of the whole entire mix of what's going on in the house sound nowadays. We kind of started a conversation on what it would mean and what it looks like to have 
Squamish Stalmoch to have Squamish people back out on the territory and back out taking care of the lands and teaching others about the territory and the lands. Um, but also really bringing in the Squamish representation um, into different aspects of what how Sound looks like now and what we want it to look like and also what it's looked like in the past in the history of How Sound. One of the big projects that we have been doing is data collection and surveying for herring. Uh, herring is one of the most important because of all the things that eat it and how much it provides to the ecosystem. One of the sayings that I heard was, if there's herring, there's hope. My mom recently just used the map in her school, also known as Culture Journeys and Learning Expeditions. She uses it in there to teach various things about our history and traditional ecological knowledge in the house sound. So the thing that excites me the most is how much it's been able to connect. Everyone being connected is what really like, brings up my heart and makes me happy. That's like what I want to see from the Marine Reference Guide. I really think that the, the research tools are really going to help us, especially coming from a leadership role, having all of uh, our, our regions and our municipalities come together, uh, all our different governments coming together so that we can effectively plan, um, not just for today, but for future as well. Looking forward, our goal is that the guide will continue to provide service to the Sounds community. We hope that it enables decision makers to proactively protect both ocean health and community access. That it catalyzes new research and education projects to strengthen people's understanding of this beautiful place. And we hope that it inspires other communities throughout the Salish Sea, British Columbia and Canada to conduct similar bottom-up approaches to protecting their ocean and communities. Rather than teaching the next generation of what to do to be sustainable, we need to make sure we're teaching this generation of all ages of what to do to make sure that we have a healthy and flourishing house on a capsule. I think it's really important that we start to recognize that humans, human health and economies are not something that's distinct from biodiversity and ecosystems. We're all connected. All of this land that we are on right now, we're just borrowing it from future generations. We're borrowing it from our grandkids. We're borrowing it from our kids and their grandkids. And what do you want to tell them you did for the environment for when they're, when they're older? Do you want to be the one who said you sat there and did nothing? Or you were, do you want to be the one who said you tried to help? I always like to tell people just, just to be out on the land. You know, to be out on the land, having that connection, especially with our youth um, and our manman, it's really good to see them out there. But if you're out on the land, out in the territory, you grow a connection, a strong connection with that, that land and this territory. Um, so, and then having that, that love and care for it, that they're gonna better protect it and better conserve and just be more respectful. So just asking people to, to get out and enjoy our territory and and be mindful and respectful of all the other creatures that, that also are using the space. Um, yeah.